Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we are going to have a look at an amazing new AR kit feature which allows us to detect and track images and use this information to move, for example, 3D objects around in our augmented reality scene. Isn't that amazing? We have a 3D object of this ship and we can move around the iPad that holds our image that we can detect and by moving the image, so by moving the iPad, this could be a picture frame or whatever, we move around our 3D object. So very cool stuff and we're going to use a simple image of the ship. This is a JPEG image, we can use that in a second. You could use whatever image you would like. You can use a 3D model to place on top of the detected image, a plane, a, uh, a SCN plane, not a flying plane was what I meant. Uh, we can replace this um, image that we see in our augmented reality scene with a video, with a plane, with a 3D model, whatever. So I'm going to show you now how this is done and it is really amazing. So in this project, I have made just a few modifications. It's a uh, augmented reality template with the ship that is added automatically. Here I've just adjusted the um, scale of the ship mesh, set this to 0 0.003, also zeroed out the position coordinates, nothing fancy. I have added another empty game scene because this is what I'd like to load as soon as we start into our augmented reality scene and this is also what I'm going to load in our view controller, in view to load, here we already preload a SCN scene and instead of preloading the ship scene, I'm now preloading my game scene and present this to our augmented reality scene by adding it to the scene views scene property. So enough sentences with scene in it, now let's move on. In view will appear. This is always the place to initialize an augmented reality configuration. And by default, we get an AR world tracking configuration when we create a scene kit augmented reality template. And in our case, we do not want this world tracking configuration. We are interested in image tracking. So what we are going to do is replace that with AR image tracking configuration. It's as simple as that. And now what we have to do is specify the images that we'd like to track. And in my case, I only have one and I'm going to show you how this is done. So we're adding a guardless statement. I'm going to create an object called tracked images. And this is going to contain all the reference images that we can look for in an augmented reality scene. So I'm using AR reference image and the reference images function right here. Now I have to specify the group name in my assets folder and I'm going to go with photos in my main bundle, so just bundle and main. If this works, we can continue and if it doesn't, we're going to add an else block here. We can print no images available and we can also just return because if there are no images, then we cannot run our application. We cannot run our augmented reality session and our app would be useless. But how can we now add images to our assets folder? We can just drag and drop our image right into here in our assets folder. Instead, what we do is right click and create a new AR resource group. And in this AR resource group, we can add our image. So I have my image right here on my desktop. I drag that into my resource group. Now we have a little warning here. We're going to deal with that in a second. But first, I have to rename my resource group to photos because this is what I used in my view controller. And this warning is about the dimension of our ship photo because we haven't specified a width or height. And in my attributes inspector, I'm going to adjust the width to 0.2 meters and the height is going to be auto completed for me or it should at least be auto completed 0.2 meters and we get 
an automatic height for our image as well. I think this is going to work nicely for our ship image. I can build this now and now we are good to go. Our warning disappeared. This warning has to do with the fact that we did not use our tracked images and we're going to change that as well right now. So below our guard let's statement and before we run our session, we can use our configuration, our image tracking configuration and change the tracking images property here. And what we'd like to do is just add our tracked images set that we've just created using AR reference image and the reference images function. And with that, we have configured our configuration in a way to look for all the images that are available in our photos group in our assets folder. And now we can also change one more setting in our configuration because we only have one photo to look for. We can also set the maximum number of tracked images. And this is the maximum number of images which are simultaneously tracked for movement. So here we just set this to one because we only have one image, we only have to track one image. And then we run this using our scene view, its session and the run function can build that real quickly and all our warning also disappears. Now for the interesting part, we have configured our session and now we can do something once we have found our object or our photo. So here we need to add another function right here in the section for ARSCN view delegate, because this is one of the delegate functions of ARSCN view delegate. And we're going to remove all of these predefined functions right here that were added with the template. And we're going to look for renderer node for anchor. And this function is always called when a new anchor is added to the scene. And when we find our image in our AR world, then an anchor is added to the scene. So this is the place where we can work with this anchor. And to look for it, I'm just going to use an if let statement, creating an image anchor object. And then I can use the anchor that is given to us as a parameter and try to cast that to an AR image anchor. And if this works, then we can work with an image anchor, access its physical size and so on. But before we do that, since we have to return an SCN node here, let me create a node object above our if let statement real quickly, SCN node, initialize that and also return that node after our um, if let statement where we create our image anchor to get rid of this error. So before we add our spaceship, what we also can do is replace the real image on our iPad or in our picture frame or wherever with a plane, with a scene kit plane. So to do that, let's add a new object, call it plane, which is an SCN plane, and initialize it with a width and a height. So where do we get that from? Wouldn't it be cool if we could use our image anchor and somehow our image anchor would know how large the image is? Well, it can. We just have to use the image anchor, use the reference image property, go for the physical size and search for the width property. And that's it. We're going to do the same thing for the height. So image anchor, reference image, physical size, and height. And with that, we've created a plane that has the same dimensions as the plane or the image in the real world. Isn't that cool? And with this plane, we can now, for example, change its look. We can use the plane, access its first material, its diffuse and its contents and give it by that or with this configuration, accessing its material and the diffuse material, um, we can now change the color, for example, setting it in my case, I thought to a white color uh, with a slight change in the alpha value so that can, we can look through it and still see the original image added 80% alpha value here. You could go for whatever you like. You could also add a whole different image. You could also add a video player here. So for example, replace the 
image with a video of a similar object, for example, uh, a video of a spaceship or whatever you like. So this would definitely be a possibility. But now that we have our plane, we also need a SCN node to display it. So let's create a plane node, create an SCN node and initialize it with a geometry. In our case, this is our plane. So with that geometry ready and with our plane ready, we still have to rotate it to match the anchor's rotation. So I'm using the plane node, axis its angles, change the x angle to negative pi, or half of pi actually, so that we have the same rotation as our AR anchor. And now we can just use the node object that I've just created above our if let statement to check if we can get an AR image anchor, use that node and add our plane node as a child node. So here we have our plane node. And now once we run this on a physical device, because you cannot use ARKit or test ARKit in the simulator, we should get a result like this. I have just pre-recorded that so that we can save some time here. So as soon as I open my image of the ship, the image is going to be replaced or actually we are adding our plane here that has a alpha value of 80%. So we can still see the original image. We can move it around and it disappears. The plane disappears as soon as our image disappears. So already very cool. Now, how do we get our 3D model of our ship into that scene? So very simple. We go back into our view controller and we still have to create our ship. We can do that right below our um, property changes of our plane node. We create a ship scene because we have to load our ship from an SCN scene. So we have a ship scene using SCN scene to initialize that with a name. So we're looking for it in the art.scn assets folder and it's called ship.scn. And then we have to unwrap this. We could um, look for or check if this could go wrong. So definitely do that when you create an app for the App Store. But since we're in a tutorial, I will just skip that and be sure that everything is named and spelled correctly. And now I'm going to create a ship node by using my ship scene, access the root node of the scene looking for all the child nodes and just use the first node that I get. And this will be the scene since we also only have this one node in our scene. And then what we still have to do is change the position of our ship. So I'm using my ship node, set the position to the origin of our plane actually, because I'm going to add this um, ship to the plane. I'm just going to zero out everything again. So I'm using SCN vector three zero, and then I'm just going to change the Z component of our position to move our ship slightly in direction of the user out of the image actually. So I'm using the ship node, access the position and its Z component and just set this to 0.15. And then we've configured our ship using our plane node, adding our child node, which is our ship node. And that's all there is to it. Then we can return our node, which we already did in our renderer node for anchor function. And as soon as we run this on a physical device, what we get is as soon as our app detects the image that we've predefined, we're adding our layer, we're adding our plane, we're adding our 3D model and we can move it around. And it's just so cool. I hope you enjoyed this introduction into this great AR kit feature. If you do, make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any new videos. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.